Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this video, I'll be somewhat relying on the information provided in the previous video about Bevy's assets. So if you have not seen that video or just would like a refresher, now is your chance to go watch that video. This video will go much more in depth about how you can use the asset server in your application. First, I'll cover what the asset server actually is and why Bevy needs an asset server. Then I'll go over how you queue asset loading into the asset server, how you can provide asset labels so that multiple assets can be loaded from a file, how to force an asset to reload or enable Bevy's hot reloading, how to check the state of an asset within the asset server, some basic interactions with handles that the asset server has, and custom loaders, what they are and how to include them in the asset server. The actual creation of custom asset loaders will be separated into its own video since that topic is quite large on its own. So what is the asset server? In Bevy, the asset server is a resource added by the assets plugin that is included in the default plugin group. It is used to track and manage your assets. It does this by allowing you to load assets from files and also unload any assets that do not have strong handles pointing to them. It also keeps some metadata about the assets that it has loaded. The asset server also works as Bevy's abstraction layer on top of the I.O. system that your game is compiled for. This allows your game to seamlessly compile for WASM as well as Linux and Windows, despite these systems having different ways to interact with the file system. The asset server also allows Bevy to optimize its parallelization by allowing background threads to do the asset processing. Since these threads are doing a lot of I.O. reading and could take several frames to finish processing after they have finished their I.O. read, they are a perfect candidate for background tasks. So that's exactly what Bevy does. Bevy uses dedicated I.O. threads for this. So loading a large number of assets at once should not have any impact on the frame to frame update time of your game since all game logic is done in compute threads. This does however provide an opportunity for a potential speed up for people that know what they're doing in CPU bound games. Since Bevy creates enough I.O. threads to occupy 25% of your CPU's compute cores and does the same for async threads. This results in half of your CPU's potential cores not being utilized if you are not loading assets or using the async cores directly. It is possible to change these numbers, but I would recommend only doing this if you're an advanced user. And this will be covered in more detail in a potential future video. How to load assets. Bevy provides two direct and one indirect way to load assets through the asset server. The first and most common of these is to directly load the asset using the load method, which will return a handle to use immediately. The generic type of this handle is specified by the user or inferred by the compiler depending on where you're using the handle. Using this method, however, relies on the user to know what type of asset will load from the file that they have provided. This is also the section where the user can specify a label. This will be covered in more detail in the next section. If you need to load a large number of files or unknown named files, such as files provided by the user, this is where you can use the load folder method. This method works simpler to load, but on a whole folder, it will return a vector of untyped handles. These will then need to be cast into their appropriate type handles before it can be used. Bevy does this so that folders can contain multiple files with different extensions without you needing to know what files are actually in the folder when you call load. It leaves it up to the user to determine what type of asset it is at the end. Another potential use for loading a whole folder is if you happen to know indirectly what handles are inside that folder such as if you have a dynamic scene serialized and know that all handles relevant to that scene are in the folder. So when the dynamic scene is deserialized, it will have the corresponding handles. Although it'll have a weak version, your untyped handle, if stored, will mean that it will keep that scene's assets loaded. The indirect method of loading assets is not for general use, but instead used by asset loaders to indicate what assets they rely on to function correctly. This is in the form of dependencies. An asset loader can declare an asset path as a dependency. This will prevent that asset from unloading as if it had a strong handle and will also invoke the asset server to load this path if it has not yet already been loaded. This can be useful for loading more complex collections of assets such as a character descriptor that may include textures, meshes, sounds, and animations, all within one file. 
as text references to where you can find the actual asset, as opposed to having to generate this connection dynamically at runtime or using a file format like GLTF to bake all this information into a single file. Asset labels. When you specify a path to the load function, you can also append a hashtag followed by the label to the specific asset from that file. This allows you to access specific assets within a file. Though do note, the whole file will be loaded and all of its assets will be included. The asset label is simply used to distinguish between the assets that it has loaded and are determined by the asset loader itself. Force reloading. Bevy's asset server keeps track of all the files that you've requested for it to load. Even after the asset has finished loading, Bevy will remember the path. This allows you to use the asset server to generate handles without having to worry about the asset server attempting to load the same handle multiple times. Or when using asset labels to get multiple handles from the same file, the file will only be loaded a single time. This does have a major drawback though. If you change the asset and then call load again, Bevy will consider the asset already loaded and not update your changes. For these situations, Bevy has to provide a force reload method. This method allows you to tell the asset server that regardless of if the asset is already loaded or not, it should reattempt to load this asset. A place where this is incredibly important and that Bevy has built-in functionality to take advantage of is hot reloading. Hot reloading is the process that Bevy does when it monitors the file system for changes and will automatically force reload any asset that file changes on disk. This allows for faster development since you can simply edit the asset and Bevy will reload it for you. To enable the hot reloading functionality, when adding the assets plugin, you need to set watch for changes true. This can be done directly on the assets plugin as demonstrated on screen or when adding the default plugins by calling the dot set method and then providing the modified assets plugin. Checking an asset's state. Once you tell it the asset server to load your asset, you won't be able to access the underlying asset until after it has finished loading. You could do this in the naive way of simply polling the assets collection and seeing if you get a sum back. If you receive none, the asset has not yet loaded. This, however, is not necessarily the best approach since this requires that at some point the asset will finish loading, but this is not always guaranteed. This is where you can get, use the asset service get load state. When passed a handle, this method will return the state of the asset. This can be not loading if the asset has yet to be loaded by any of the methods previous. Loading if the asset is currently reading from disk or being processed. Loaded if the asset is ready to go and used. Failed if the asset server or the asset loader encountered an error while trying to load the asset. This could be that the file didn't exist or some corruption in the file that the asset loader cannot decipher. And finally, unloaded if the asset has not got any strong handles remaining and has since unloaded. There is also a version of this function that takes in an iterator over handles and will return the most relevant state of the group. The priority of return from the group function is whichever occurs first, not loaded, failed, or unloaded in the iteration, followed by if any one asset is loading, it will return loading, and only if all assets are loaded will it finally return loaded. How to get the path from a handle. Sometimes you have a handle and need to know what path was used to load this handle. This might be because you wanna find out what the file extension was for that path, or you could be trying to serialize a user created entity and need to convert the handles back to paths. Since asset path IDs are simply the hash of the path and label, it is not possible to directly reverse the handle back into its string representation. Instead, this is done by calling get handle path on the asset server and will return an option containing the path and label to the asset or none if the asset was not loaded using the asset server. The asset server also allows you to upgrade handles from weak to strong or just create strong handles outright. This is mostly useful when you have custom IDs or when you're creating handles as part of the asset loading process. Since you have access to a serialized ID which won't be reference counted and you will have to manually increment the reference counter by getting a strong handle. Custom loaders. Custom loaders are structs that implement the asset load trait. 
This is where you declare what file extensions should be sent to this loader and how it should convert the sequence of bytes provided from the file into the respective asset. The struct itself can also contain private information that could be useful for loading the asset, such as a type registry for if you need dynamic typing and loading in your asset loading. This is how Bevy's dynamic scenes are loaded. The dynamic scene loader actually contains a reference to the type registry that it can use to decipher the dynamic types. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the actual implementation of a asset loader will be covered in more detail in a future video, since this is actually quite a complicated topic and has a lot of nuance. But once you've created your own asset, either by watching that video or want to include someone else's asset loader that they have created, you can do so by calling add asset loader method and providing the custom struct. Or if the loader implements from world, you can also use the init asset loader, which will create the asset using its from world implementation. Hopefully you found this video useful and stick around for future videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.